Hello YouTube. Today I've got a uh, double eight millimeter movie camera uh, on Olympic uh, Keystone Olympic K35. And, uh, <coughs> the reason for for this is to show you how to take the guts out and work with the turret uh, because one of the things with these cameras is after decades uh, what they originally used for lubricant really isn't lubricant anymore it's more like glue so these things they slow down they get sluggish they don't unwind properly and any number of things uh, the only thing that makes this this is a cool little camera but the only thing that really makes it interesting is that it was uh, a camera used by a guy named uh, believe it or not Charles Bronson and that name only matters uh, if you're over 45 if you're younger than that, you never heard of him. Uh, but anyhow, it was used by a guy named Charles Bronson at Dealey Plaza the day Kennedy was shot. And some footage was shot with a cam camera very similar to this. Other than that, it's just a cool old camera. So, I'm going to get going on this. I'm going to do this in real time. Because uh, it's not a very long process to get the guts out. So I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I'm on camera and get some extra light and then get into it. So the turret comes off by taking out this screw right here. Oops. Try not to break anything when you're doing this. Get that loose and you can take this whole thing off. And it's got the screw, there's a wavy washer under there. And this one doesn't have any any uh, lenses. Uh, the lenses are on my other camera. So I have two of these. Set that aside. And then you look around for your screwdrivers. And you've got next is four screws that come out. As I said, I've had this apart. Uh, so this should move fairly quickly. I just wanted to do it in real time so that if you had one of these and you needed to take it apart, you have a feel for about how long it should take. If so, uh, you should want to know. And I'll apologize for all the fumbling time that gets wasted here. Let's try not to drop these screws inside. Get those four screws out and together. And on the back side here, there's a, a spring loaded, I have no idea what it's called, but it's what controls the starting and stopping of the rotary shutter. So, you got the screws, you got that, you set that aside. And then on, also on the inside, you've got two more screws to help hold the guts inside. So take those out. And this one right here. It may sound funny because I'm constantly checking to make sure the camera's still working. The digital camera I have is kind of old and funky. Okay. Those two screws are out. Then you want to take off your winding key. Oh. Set that aside. There's also a spring on there, but I've, I've got two of these and none of them have come off yet. And you want to take off, checking the camera. You want to take off, this is the speed selector for the, the uh, yeah, for the film, the, the frames per second. Uh, it's pretty, pretty easy to put that back together. It's a, either right or wrong, and you can move both the knob and, and the little tag as you need to. If you're on 48 frames per second, you cannot miss it, and you just work from there. Got that off, got that off. Those screws are out. And from the inside, you got two screws in the back here. Oops, try not to lose. 
use these. Now, as I said, I've had this thing apart already, so these screws are, are pretty well loosened up. Um, <clears throat> you may struggle a bit with uh, getting these screws out. Sometimes they are sticky. And you've got, this has two, but there's supposed to be three screws to hold the door on. These I had to fight with uh, to avoid stripping out the slot where the screwdriver goes. I ended up taking miniature vice grips and grabbing the screws by the sides. Set that aside. Make sure the screws. Oh. And just like that, it falls out actually not supposed to fall out quite that easy but let's go through this again this is also still a working camera so you take out those two screws you got all the stuff off the front <coughs> and you can take with a slight tilt up this way and a little bit of wiggling the guts Oh sure, it falls out before. All right. One thing I did, uh, checking the camera again, one thing I did was I made sure that the uh, rotary shutter was in this position. There, then it came out. Because there's a couple of machined bosses in here that the, the clutch has to, or not the clutch, but the uh, shutter has to clear. And then, that gives you, be very careful with this rotary shutter, it's very delicate. Having done all that, you check your camera, yep, it's still running, and then you can go into the guts of the camera, there's a gear here that you'll want to grease. I would actually start with oil. You want to get in there, and you want to take out any excess lubricant you find, It'll usually look, uh, be in the form of um, almost like peanut butter, really, because that's what it kind of turns into after enough years go by. But you can get in there. Oh, you probably can't see this. Pointer. So I'll do it this way. Right here. There's a gear that you want to grease right in here, underneath here, in there. There's a shaft that has um, a spring pressing against it. You want to oil that. There are spots where shafts come through on the side here, here, and here. Now all all of these uh, all of these mechanical cameras are more or less the same all the clockwork ones <clears throat> so this the same principles that I'm showing you here could be applied to almost any other uh, camera in its similar class so you've got on whatever camera you got you're gonna have points where the sh where these various shafts go from one side to the next there's gonna be moving points here 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 uh, put a drop of oil on that one that one that one on the other side there's two spots you can also put a drop of oil and that'll lubricate the bearing and the shaft where it comes through. Uh, on this one there happens to be one underneath here. Uh, to get that off you gotta take the the uh, film gate off and all, all of this stuff and I, I was able to reach it from the inside. Um, and this when they're working of course this is this is the take up spool. This is the one that does the actual work and, and winds your film. Um, and this works. This one was stuck. It had, I guess, rusted. I don't, I'm not really sure. Anyhow, it works. Uh, there's two plates in here behind the mainspring that are kind of like that. And this thing on its backside has like a nylon disc. 
if you can see it, or I hope you can see it. It has like a nylon disc that is in between those two plates, and as the thing unwinds, it's it's uh, that disc riding between those two plates that actually turns this thing uh, and does your take-up work. And I don't think that's you know what I'll wind it up so you can see what it does. And as I said, I got a bunch of these movie cameras. Most work okay. Now, if you want to do this yourself, you can put your finger right. Hope you saw that. You you can stop the sh the rotary shutter by very gently just putting your finger in the way of it. You can wind it up, and then remove your finger and let it go. Then you can see what everything does, and you can see all the moving points where gears, pins, bearings, and shafts all work, uh, and pretty much anything that moves, put a dot of oil on it, and that should improve its perform performance immeasurably. Um, I'm not going to bother going through the reassembly. It's the same thing in reverse. The only tricky part is again to make sure that your shutter is in. Let's see. This is the here's your film film side. This is the front of your camera. This is top. This is bottom. When you put the guts back in, you want the rotary shutter in the horizontal position so that you can clear those two machined bosses and it should more or less drop right back out in. Oh, I forgot something. First time I did this, <coughs> this little felt piece dropped out. I gotta take it apart again. That little felt piece goes right there on the sight tube, at the end of the sight tube. Uh, I gotta glue that back in. But anyhow, that's it. That is the Keystone Olympic 35. Historically, uh, very fairly famous camera. Um, I haven't used it in the field this coming summer. I would like to. And I anticipate its performance will be uh, equal to some of the other, you know, mid-range, low, low-end, consumer-grade cameras of the time. Um, and I hope you learned something from that. I hope you found some useful information. Uh, these are not as complicated as you might think. It's very simple clockwork. Has the only thing I would caution about is getting oil on this disc down here. This is what controls your film speed, and you want to have that. Make sure it's clean. Because it's oily, it won't it won't create proper drag, and so your your uh, frames per second could be funky. Anyhow, I think that covers everything. And uh, oh, one other detail: when putting, okay, I'm out of order here. When putting this, oops, back on this, make sure and lower it in this way, because there is a doohickey right here. That is what you're, it's acting as a poppet ball and clicks into divots in the edge of the turret. And you have to make sure, don't just put it straight down in because it'll land on top of the poppet. Oops, I'm off camera again. It's on top of the, land on top of the poppet and it won't work. You've got to bring it in this way. Actually, all right. Start with it here. Oops. Okay. Pop it. Turret. Bring it in like this. And like that. And then if you turn it, you'll be able to feel it click into place. And that's it. That's all I wanted to show you. Hope you find this useful. So until next time.